So we're on our seventh part of the um, story of the Old Testament. And we talked about the divided kingdom. After Solomon, the people of God had split from Is Israel and Judah. There were these prophets that were raised up by God to preach to the kings of Israel and Judah. Uh, and so there were prophets um, in Israel and there were prophets in Judah and they were prophesying, different prophets prophesying against these corrupt kings on either side. And we looked at um, the fact that Israel and then Judah were to collapse completely. And now we're taken into the period where the the empire, the Babylonian empire, took uh, the people of God into captivity. And we see the prophecy in Ezekiel 33. Um, Ezekiel uh, 33. And it says in verse 21, And it came to pass in the twelfth year of our captivity, in the tenth month of the fifth day of the month, that one who has escaped from Jerusalem came to me and said, The city has been captured. Now the hand of the Lord had been upon me the evening before the man came who had escaped, and he had opened my mouth. So when he came to me in the morning, my mouth was opened, and I was no longer mute. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, they who inhabit those ruins in the land of Israel are saying Abraham was only one and he inherited the land but we are many the land has been given to us as a possession therefore say to them thus says the Lord God you eat meat with the blood you lift up your eyes towards your idols and shed blood should you then possess the land so that's a it's talking there about the people of God are going to be you know Jerusalem is going to fall and the people of God are going to be taken into captivity um, if you go back a bit to Ezekiel chapter 33 it says again the word of the Lord came to me saying son of man verse 1 son of man verse 2 speak to the children of your people and say to them when I bring the sword upon a land and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman when he sees the sword coming upon the land if he blows the trumpet and warns the people then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning of the sword come and take him away his blood shall be on his own head so God sets up a watchman to warn the people of the coming doom that they're going to experience and they experience this doom Jerusalem falls and the people of God are taken into captivity the book of Daniel uh, was uh, a book uh, a prophet that was in that captivity period it tells the story of uh, Daniel and his friends what it was like to live in captivity um, they they were trained by uh, the king of the time uh, to try and uh, integrate into the Babylonian culture uh, we read in Daniel chapter 1 uh, verse 5 and the king appointed for themselves a daily provision of king delicacies and the wine which he drank and three years of training for them that's Daniel and his friends that at the end of that time they might serve before the king now from among those of the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hannah, Mishael and Azra to them the chiefs of the eunuchs gave names he gave Daniel the name Belthazar to Hanai, Shadrach and to Mishael, Meshach and to Azariah Abendigo. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested the chief of the eunuch, eunuchs that he might not defile himself. <coughs> so, the, the book of Daniel is the story of Daniel uh, in the time of the Babylonian and, and the Persian empires, um, and his servant serving these leaders, these kings and how God was faithful to him and the people of Israel but also there are prophecies um, and visions such as uh, Daniel chapter 9 uh, Daniel sees prophesies the Messiah is going to come um, and it's quite amazing really 
<clears throat> you also get in Isaiah 13 and Jeremiah 25 uh, the fall of the Babylonians uh, to the Persian Empire. The Israels taken into captivity is about 586 BC to 516 BC. Um, then the people of God are allowed back uh, to Jerusalem to build the temple uh, and to start over again in Jerusalem. And so we have the wonderful books like um, uh, Nehemiah, it's one of my favorite books, which is a story about Nehemiah, who was the cupbearer of the king, who came back, uh, who, who was a Jewish person who came back. Um, I'll see if I can find it. <clears throat> we read, um, just to see in time. So, in the time of Daniel, they're in captivity uh, by the Babylonian and Persian Empire. The Babylonian falls to the Persians, uh, but people are allowed back eventually uh, to Jerusalem. Nehemiah comes back. The word of Nehemiah, the son of uh, Hachiliah, it came to pass in the month of uh, Chislev, in the twentieth year as I was in the Shushan, the city, that Hanai, one of my brethren, came with the men from Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, The survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down and its gates are burned with fire. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I said, Oh, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O oh great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments, please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of children of Israel, which we have sinned against you, both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you, and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember, I pray the word that you command your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments, and do them, though some of you were cast into the farthest fire part of the heavens, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Now these are your servants and your people from whom you have redeemed your great by your great power and by your strong hand. O Lord, I pray, please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your name. And let your servant prosper this day. I pray and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. For I was the king's cupbearer. And then in Nehemiah chapter 2. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan. The twentieth year of king Artaxerxes. When wine was before him. That I took the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had never been sad in his presence. And the king gave him permission. To go back to be with his people in Israel. And so you get the book of Nehemiah, which is the story of Nehemiah coming back and helping God's people to build the temple. You've got the book of uh, Ezra, um, where it has the story of building the temple of God again, which is Ezra chapter 6. You have the story in the captivity time uh, of the book of Esther. Uh, Esther chapter 8 is a good chapter where, where Esther helps... Uh, God's people to deliver from being massacred uh, while they were in captivity and then you have uh, Ezra prepares to return to Jerusalem in Ezra chapter 7 you have the building of the wall of Jerusalem in Nehemiah chapter 2 you have Malachi's prophesy, prophecies at this time and Haggai's prophecies about uh, building the temple that's the restoration from the captivity is 516 to 400 BC. So we've come to the end of uh, the Old Testament. Then you have uh, Greece has become the world power um, 
and then from there you get the Roman Empire growing and you get a, a long silence of 400 years so from uh, 331 BC to 168 BC uh, you get the superpowers of Greece and Rome Greece dying out and Rome becoming powerful um, and I think the Roman Empire is from 168 to 476 AD uh, in, in, in height of its power uh, the time between uh, the Old Testament end of the Old Testament to the to uh, the beginning of the New Testament uh, sort of the, the start of the life of Jesus is from about 400 BC to about um, 5 AD something like that roughly it might be a little bit less a little bit more okay so that's the history of the Old Testament um, I've just shared a bit of things uh, Luther said the Bible is the cradle where Christ is laid and if you go through the Old Testament you can't understand the Old Testament without understanding um, what the Old Testament is about key factors what the Old Testament is about so I'm going to um, take you now in our final part just to a book called the book of Hebrews which will give you the hermeneutical keys to understand that whole story that we've looked at alright thanks for listening and God bless you